And then you should have the overall division-wide financial statement. Um, there, our expenditures, I think, are, are as, as anticipated. You know, we all know that we do have significant savings um, from the uh, speech pathology position, and we have significant savings in health insurance this year, and we're going to need those savings because we do have, you know, we do have under, our, our ADM is under what we thought it would be. We budgeted for 985, and it's probably going to be 965. I think the whole state budget could, could change substantially. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Given yes. the times that you know we have, we have a uh, a minimum wage increase. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure that would continue given uh, given the economic situation that we're facing. I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. Flexible. From what I'm understanding from some folks, um, this the end of this week through the weekend of the first of next week, we should know a fair bit more about what the state has begun to do. Uh, as far as adjusting uh, the budget, apparently the, it's going to go in front of the governor. Yeah. So uh, I would think by Monday or Tuesday we will have at least the, the first round of the damage report <laughs> coming from the state. So We are still finalizing our ADM, which would tell us how much money we're going to get for this school year from the caboose budget. We just started that process uh, Friday, so we don't have a final number. We're um, trying to clean up some power school information to make sure we're reporting accurately. So I had hoped to give you all probably something in writing as soon as we know where we stand with our ADM and what it might do financially to us, but we don't have that information tonight to share. Are we still at about 960? We, we look like we're around 965, okay. uh, give or take a few, and that's a little bit better than we anticipated a month ago, but I don't want to say that's final okay. until we actually okay. extract the last bit of data from our student information system. We informed principals that no more spending would happen after April 30th, that all of their spending and invoices needed to be to this office by April 30th, and everything has to go through an approval process bef to me before we spend any money this month because we're trying to make sure we have every bit of money that we need to finish out the school year. So. Given today's date and some of the other projections and suggestions, if we give it through the 14th, mm -hmm. you know, we may see some changes mm -hmm. in some of our restrictions, mm -hmm. yeah. meeting-wise, yeah. and things like that across Definitely. the board. Okay. So um, I would just say let's just play the play the patient need? game. Okay. 2021 20, annual plan for special education. Melinda? Yes, and uh, this is something we do every year. Um, it's required to get our money uh, from the federal government for supporting special education in Covington schools, and they tell us to level fund every year, so we are requesting from the uh, federal government through the Virginia Department of Education $236,470. And that's outlined in this plan. Um, we use it to fund salaries of special ed teachers uh, for K through 12, and we also use uh, about $10,300 for one early childhood special ed teacher. And this outlines all those assurances that we are doing what the law says we have to do. And, uh, uh, it has to be uh, to the Department of Education by May the 8th. And we ask the school board every year for approval for the plan. This year we just didn't put it in a notebook, we just put it in a little paper format, but we do this every year for those that have been on the board for a number of years. But it does require approval to submit it. Um, something that the Virginia School Board Association attorney Elizabeth Ewing sent to us last week because there are some legal things that are requiring us to do changes uh, as we speak with the executive orders that the governor has presented over the last few weeks. Um, this is just, if we didn't do it this way, we might have to go into each policy and effectively change each policy and then go back and reopen those policies again. So this just gives us temporary flexibility uh, to change any policy that might need to be changed 
because of the pandemic. And I think this is a nice clean way and doesn't require us taking our policy manual and, and breaking down each of the policies because every day there appears to be a different policy that's being impacted. So, uh, so it does require a motion and a second and then some signatures and I hope all of you've had a chance to read it. It is quite lengthy and it is. <laughs> a lot of I like them. the timeline. Yes, it was I mean very clear. I really do. Very yes, it yeah. was very clear. Yeah. Um, I just think that it has been really helpful um, and I think that all the people that have been assisting with that have done a wonderful job. Me and Amaya decided one day we would just get them for all the kids that we knew that couldn't get out. So we've been delivering them, sort of, kind of, every day. And, um, they're so excited. They might not like much the school. But, oh, I'm sorry. But they, they're looking forward to it. I mean, they're waiting at the door after the There's a lot of snacks in there. Mm -hmm. They Definitely. don't like the sandwich. There's plenty of things that they can eat to make right. them. And I do want, I'm glad you mentioned it. I do appreciate what those, all those individuals Definitely. are doing each and every day. Uh, and you've got a document on your yes, table right that explains here. what we've done and how we have uh, seen the numbers increase. Definitely. And uh, it's a it's a good thing. And every time a principal does a school messenger phone call, I know Miss Morgan does. She asks families, "Don't forget, we're still feeding, and mm -hmm. please come." And um, I hope that every family is listening and will come. Every day I see new faces at the Edgemont Church uh, feeding place. Um, so I think families are taking advantage of what we have to offer. Yeah. Okay. And really made a situation that could have been a detriment really beneficial. I mean, everybody, and Melinda, I can't even begin <laughs> to thank you for everything you've done because yes. I know you have worked tirelessly yeah. yes. along yeah. with the principals, the principals and everybody. Been, the principals yes. have been very, very hard working and they don't stop. Right now, Dr. Furman's on phone calls with most of them trying to iron out some of the things that need to happen with grades and getting work back in. So mm -hmm. they have yeah. not stopped at all either. Definitely. And, and I hope when this settles down, they can all come in and explain to you all what they've been doing and how they've done it. But it's been, one, it's been wonderful. Concerning kids that, and this is probably, anyway, um, for a kid that was getting an advanced diploma, and we're doing the pass fail. Uh, it won't. It won't impact. Okay. No, I it does not matter what kind of diploma a student was signed up for or hoped to get. If they had everything for an advanced studies diploma, the pass fail won't impact that. They'll still get the diploma that they have earned. So that's an excellent question. So um, we are working hard to make sure that those diploma are honored. Um, and we want students to feel like we believe in them and we know that they can get this done and they are working hard. Mr. Cantrell told us today we had a staff meeting at one o'clock that he's seen students that have already spent eight hours on edgenuity working to try to keep up and that it's just amazing what our students are doing. So we're gonna make sure those diplomas happen as they need to happen. So. We had talks of trying to do the graduation and all, but since then things have changed. Would that make it extend it more? We no, uh, no. Actually, I have a bit. Mr. Cantrell has been tentatively hoping and saying that July 31st was going to be graduation date, and we hope that can still happen. So we don't. We think that we'll be okay and get that done somehow or another. Um, I know every time we hear one more thing from one more governor's press conference, we wonder if it's going to push things forward. We've seen some um, school divisions that are st have still hoped to do a June graduation, but that doesn't look like that's going to happen if they had it done before June 10th. So we feel like this date is a good date to keep in front of everyone's, you know, eyes. 
you, you talked about locally verified credits. Did you want to bring us up to speed well, about the anything? Well, lo the locally verified credits mm -hmm. is still is one of the things that's changing with the governor's orders and the okay. state superintendent's order. So we don't have a presentation for for the April meeting. Uh, we actually discussed that, but we can award more locally verified credits now. The flexibility was opened up because of this recent change so what we had hoped to do back in april is now totally different because of the executive order and then the state superintendent uh, flexibility and opening up uh, locally awarded verified credits okay yeah sort of addressing where we are with the consolidation committee um the advisors in troutman sanders um feel like you know much like what we've talked about here with got to take a little bit of a wait and see attitude as far as what the state will do um, but that through um, a little bit of patience and perseverance here maybe some uh, creativity with electronic meetings and things we're sort of trying to make sure we know exactly where we stand as to what our level of flexibility with those electronic meetings are um, but I think we are blessed that this has happened in 2020 as opposed to 1985 um, so oh, yes. we've got mm -hmm. we've got some flexibility to to still get especially some of that subcommittee work done I think that's where we had started at okay. um, and I know I mean we've had things as you know, uh, uh, Miss Nee Johnson and Mr. Katoka we're going to get together and sort of talk about policy manual differences between the two divisions one of the things that the, the committee would have to do is recommend one policy manual over the other basically but we obviously want to do that um, in some sort of academic fashion. We just don't want to eeny, meeny, miny, mo that. We want to take a look at the differences between the two. And then, of course, it was less than a week after we had talked about that, we had the school shut down you know, for the entire year. So, yeah. Yeah. so they, they've had, understandably, a full, full plate. We think um, maybe a benefit of this is the folks in Richmond from um, the Board of Education, which would have to have a first reading and then a review of any proposal that, that the Consolidation Committee would put forward, um, we think they may be a little bit more sympathetic and flexible in their timelines given everything that's gone on and the complications. Okay. So um, we're, still, we're still intending to do the things that we had sought out to do uh, as far as the subcommittee work goes, but obviously we've had some very busy folks. <laughs> Um, that have been participating have had to, to take their attention and put it elsewhere. So we're we're patient but persevering. Okay. All right. And Jade on TC. Mr. Uh, Cantrell. Mr. Cantrell. Sorry. Mr. Spangler says that we are still going to meet next week, and I'm not sure how he's going to do it. But he says he's going to take that room and spread everybody out. Yeah. So, have you talked to them? I, I did. I talked to them last week, and I think his idea was very similar to what we do here. Um, just try to space everybody out as much as possible, and then, of course, try to, to abide by the, the 10 or less. So, okay. yeah. yeah. Well, you want to talk about what you know about well, the governor school? Yeah. From the last correspondence I received, pretty much because of this situation, um, we have closed everything. Yes, right. yeah. yes, because the college is closed, right? No yeah. classes no, no classes or anything. Distance learning. Distance. Yeah. yeah. So the science fair. So the is, science is, fair is gone. Is and gone. The annual banquet is gone. Yes. And, so. And I'm sure, knowing Mr. Graham, he will make sure that those seniors are recognized somehow Definitely. for for their work. Uh, yeah. And, because it's a very big uh, event, uh, what he does at the end of this uh, last academic banquet for the JR.